Cuervo. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is Shailene Rafaelito. She's a Native American. I was honored a few months ago to go to Manhattan Film Festival to watch this wonderful inspirational movie called Run to the East. After the movie, I talked to the director, Henry Liu, and he pointed out that there was a Native American in the audience. A few months later, I invited her to come on Gotta Run. Please welcome Shay. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. Well, thank you so much for dropping in. Shay, let's get started by sharing with our audience a little bit about yourself. Where were you born, a little bit about your family, a little bit about your schooling? I was born in Durango, Colorado, and um, my family then moved when I was about six or seven to Pine Hill, well, to Rama, New Mexico, and um, my mom had accepted a teaching position at um, Pine Hill Schools on the Rama Navajo Reservation. Mm -hmm. We moved there because my dad is from um, the he's from the Rama Navajo Reservation, uh, but he had grown up in Boulder, Colorado, and so both of them kind of had roots and friends and other family in Colorado, and then kind of moved us all out to New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the oldest of three, so um, at the time it was me, my little brother, and my little baby sister at the time. Cool. So your father is a Native American Navajo? Yes. And your yes. mom? And my mom is from uh, Michigan, Ohio. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> You'd probably <laughs> never pick me out to be her kid. <laughs> wow, that's terrific. Well, it must be an interesting love story, but we're here to talk about <laughs> you. When you moved at six or seven, back to the reservation, was mm -hmm. that a startling kind of a move? Was that, how was that, how did you feel at that time? I, I remember being a little kid and kind of, I had just started, I think, preschool and was, or had just been moving maybe from preschool to kindergarten or kindergarten to the next uh, grade and I remember thinking, oh, I'm gonna lose all my friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was a little bit, I think I was the most resistant to the move because I had already started to kind of build my little social network <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, and then we moved um, to a to a really small town and um, that was kind of I think that was just really different for me as a little kid in Pine Hill uh, my mom taught there uh -huh. and it was a K through 5 or sorry K through 12 school right. and um, so I went there K through 12 and um, that's kindergarten to about eighth grade yep like that. you know everyone by the time you're a senior you know okay. even the really the youngest of the young okay so it's a very small school yeah was, I, was your mom one of your teachers then uh, no she was not we had two fourth grade classes she was a fourth grade teacher when I was going through okay. and um, I remember I really wanted to be in her class because all of my friends were in her class but she said, no, I had to stay in the other class. Oh, okay. <laughs> Too much of a good thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm sure the dinner timetable discussion must have been interesting. Oh, always. <laughs> I remember at one point I kind of was interested in um, the rodeo because that was a big thing in the Southwest. Okay. And um, that was short-lived. <laughs> and I remember being in, in third grade and my mom and... Um, a coach, one of the high school coaches at the time had come out. Our school is, the elementary part was kind of built into kivas. They look like Navajo traditional hogans. Mm -hmm. And there's the lower pod and then the upper pod. And so there was a little like bridge in between. And my mom worked in the upper pod and I was at the lower part, pod in third grade. And I remember her coming out and bringing me out to the little, we always had this um, uh, in the middle of the, the um, Hogan like structures of the school mm -hmm. there is like a, a fireplace and so and you could like sit around and all this all the classrooms were around the kiva area so we would sit she sat me down and the coach was there and she was like well mr jones is thinking that you might be interested in running um in a cross country race and i was like in third grade and they had these little uh elementary races and uh -huh. i was i remember thinking well, are my cousins doing it? Because I always wanted to do everything that my older cousins did. Of course. And so I said, yeah, okay. let's do it. <laughs> and um, that's kind of where I started running for, for competition. Before I started running in the small cross-country races, mm -hmm. my dad always wanted us to be very active kids. So he was always 
pushing a sport on us. Let's play basketball. Let's, what about volleyball? What about, okay. <laughs> he was always like wanting us to be very active kids. He always would ask us to run in the morning and he, he was always getting us up at the crack of dawn and would say, it's time to run. Like we have to like greet the sun. And I just always thought he was crazy because, and he's like, it's a Navajo tradition. Everybody runs in the morning. And we just thought he was kind of crazy because we didn't have any friends really who would run in the okay. morning, but we knew our cousins did. And we just thought, well, their, their dad's probably just as crazy as our dad. <laughs> but um, so, and then as I got older, I realized, oh, this is a real thing. Okay. And um, so from a really young age, I was kind of uh, a morning runner. In junior high, I got really excited about the running because mm -hmm. I think I had some, my cousins at that time were in high school and because it was a K through 12 school, I always was right next to them and that's what they were doing. So I always wanted to do that. In the small schools, if you're like in eighth grade, you can run varsity. So I started running with the big girls when I was in, in junior high still mm -hmm. and um, ran all through high school, both track and cross country. Were there any particularly nice races that you recall from those days, particularly such a beautiful state like New Mexico? I could imagine some of the courses could be spectacular. I will always remember Zuni High because they had the best races. They were always right next to a big plateau that's right in the Zuni community. And so the, the cross country meet, we'd all start on this dirt road that was bright red and it would be really early in the morning and the sun would come up over the plateau. And I just always, I'll always remember that. Cool. Yeah. Now in the movie, Run to the East, was that featured, you know, certain parts of New Mexico that you recognize? Navajo Pine was one of the schools that we competed against. Oh, and okay. They are infamous for their Heartbreak Hill. I just saw it last night. There's a new documentary that's coming out. It's all about the Heartbreak Hill, and I kind of laughed because I remember thinking, if I reached out, I could touch the cell in front of me wow, as I'm going that's up really it. steep. Yeah. Did you relate to the character in Run to the East, female character? I think the character name was Tails. Yes, her story, having running as an outlet and just being able to push yourself and to commit yourself to something is mm -hmm. definitely something that I really connect to. I think you went to, on to college, right? Did you win the right. scholarship like Chantel did? Or? No, I, I went a completely um, different direction. I, I, was, I felt like I was a decent runner in high school and I really um, put a lot of work into it. And, um, but I had always been told from a young age that I should really focus on academics and that that's where I needed to put my focus. So mm -hmm. I ran and I ran for fun and it was something that I really enjoyed. Right. I had gotten some offers to maybe run for schools that were local, but I um, really stuck to my studies and uh, I was really kind of a nerd <laughs> in high school. Okay. And um, I was told, well, I, I participated in summer academic programs, so I would end up spending my summer um, in school. Okay. <laughs> uh, participating in these programs. One was the American Indian Science and Engineering Society that takes kids and put, um, you have to apply for these programs, but you apply and um, they pick a couple and you go to a different university or college every summer and you take pretty intense classes and then so I did that for a couple of years and then I also was a part of um, Upward Bound at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Wow. So um, I was there during my high school summers and took um, pretty intense and, and coursework. Still, <laughs> and you still kept your running and your athletic uh, things going as well? One of my fondest memories of those programs is that we all always, the, the program participants there were always um, runners in who were participating in these oh, programs okay. so we always would um, and funny enough a lot of us were morning runners so we would always bribe our resident advisors with snacks and like silly things to come out with us and um, supervise our morning runs and we'd um, and watch over your stuff or stuff like exactly oh. well we would uh, run all around boulder creek and we'd wow. go all throughout different college campuses together wow. before the sun even came up wow. that's that's great it's not that uh typical where you into so intensive studying because i have other runners when they wanted that intensive studying they gave up 
the athletics because they somehow felt they couldn't give up the time or get right. the time. But I'm glad you were able to manage both. It's, it's probably it's the a, best. I think running in a lot of ways is a lifestyle. If you really enjoy it, you make time for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got back to running afterwards, you know, after they got their degrees. Oh, of course. And some yeah. of them become ultra marathoners. They really got into it. That, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big jump. Oh. So where did you go to college? I went to uh, Brown University. And, um, wow, very prestigious. Yeah, I and Your family I must have been thrilled to be accepted there. They were, they were very, very excited. Um, my mom was a little sad that I was going so far away. And um, she, I remember her saying, could you go any further? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, no, but uh, that's where I think I'll be really happy. And then my sister had decided to go to a school in Maine. And I said, well, <laughs> she went further than I did, so. That was, um, it's always a running joke, like, who's going to go the furthest away? Wow. So what did you study at Brown? I, I studied community health and, um, had, and, and it's like public health. Okay. And I think you went on to, to get a master's? I did. I got my master's at NYU Wagner in health policy and management. Okay, so you moved closer to New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> what kind of work do you do? Uh, it's like a research administration kind of thing right now. Um, I'm still, I think, like a lot of people figuring out exactly what they want to do, and I, it's it's fun. I really enjoy the people that I work with, and they're um, uh, they're big researchers, so it's really fun to see them go through all like the research process mm -hmm. and kind mm -hmm. of just being there. As a youngster, did you have heroes in the running world? Like, for example. Billy Mills, he's very inspirational to Runners War Generation, and he's very big in giving talks to groups. Was, did yeah. he ever visit your schools when you were a youngster? He did. He came out and spoke to uh, the graduating class, I think two classes or three classes before me, and um, that was really cool. I remember asking him, what did you eat for breakfast? Because <laughs> I was like, you're just so cool. And up front is Bill Mills, he's pressing. Ron Clark, the world champion, Bill Mills, the United States, number 722, is leading Ron Clark. And in third place, right now, is Mahut Kamuni. As soon as the tremendous upset of Bill Mills can hang on. But Kamuni goes out ahead as Kamuni right now, leading in the 10,000 meter. Ron Clark is third. Rather, Bill Mills is in third. Ron Clark is in second right now. This is the final lap for the 10,000 meter. The unheralded Mahout Kamuni of Tunis is putting on a tremendous sprint. He's out ahead of Ron Clark. Bill Mills, the United States, is in third place. This will certainly be the fastest 10,000 meter ever won by an American. Mills, who seems to be boxed in. Suddenly there's an opening, and here he comes. Here they come down the final lap. Can Ron Clark catch the money? They're going through the field. He's coming up. He's passing the money. Look at Bill. Look at Bill. Look at Bill. Look at Bill. Well, you were probably wasn't born when the uh, 64 Olympics. Right. So that's so inspirational. We all watch it again, and uh, and the, of course the announcer going, "Look at Mills! Look at Mills!" So that's right. very inspirational. I, I, you must have seen that uh, that clip many times. Mills was uh, you know was unknown at that time. Exactly. But in the film, I mean, in the clip, it almost seems like at one point he was pushed aside. I mean, I, I love this clip. I've seen the yep. clip aside, and he said, "Oh, he doesn't have a chance." And all of a sudden. I don't know his trick photography, but it looks like the spirit of his ancestors enters his <laughs> body because he just takes off like a rocket. Did you ever explain what got into him at that, that moment that really rocketed him? I just remember his energy more more than anything, and I just you could tell that he had that like get up and go. When it's time to go, it's time to go, <laughs> and I think that must have been what kind of rushed well, through him during I, that time. I, I guess being in the Olympics brings out the best in you. I would hope so. <laughs> Well, he went on, you know, it wasn't a fluke. He went on to do uh, many, many wonderful races after that. You know, he became well known. And, uh, and uh, like I said, all the runners watched that clip of the 64 mm. Olympics. Wow, any other famous uh, Olympians uh, that we ran across? I love the movie Prefontaine. Oh, okay. I've seen that. <laughs> 
a million times. Or you love Steve Prefontaine. Oh, cool. He's not Indian. I guess he's from he, Oregon. He's, yeah, right. <laughs> now, I which movie? Because like there's two of them. Um, the one, oh, I can't remember. There's one called Without Limits. Okay, I've seen both. It's the oh, one that's just called Prefontaine. Prefontaine, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, Jeff Galloway had him here uh, because he ran with Steve Prefontaine. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's the better of the two movies. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting. It's good. <laughs> well, cool. Let's jump ahead. You finished college in New York City. Sounds like you stayed in New York City. Did you move, I think, to Brooklyn? Yep, I'm, I'm still here. And um, it's funny because I just always, I never thought I would be in New York. I, this is the last place on earth I ever thought I would be after college. And um, it's really, kind of grown on me. <laughs> and uh, now I have a, a running community. I have um, a group of girls that I run with every, just about every day when we're training um, in, Ooh, are in they Brooklyn. associate with the uh, Van Cortland Track Club? No, I met them through uh, Urban Athletics. Oh, um, and uh, we, the McCarries, Jerry and Kara. Right, oh, they're, exactly. they're wonderful people. They're great. Oh, cool. So uh, you meet at, at the uh, Madison Avenue location? Well, it's funny because we, this group, this group of girls I run with, we live right around Prospect Park. Right. So we are hardly ever up in Central Park unless we're doing a long run that brings us up there. And so we have kind of, we have our own little meetup. 5.40 a.m. and we... 5.40 a.m. every yeah. day or...? Uh, if we're training for a marathon, most of the time it's about 5.40, 6 a.m. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And does Jerry go up there or you have a, a coach uh, <laughs> from Urban Athletics? We kind of do our own thing, um, but we had all met through Urban Athletics um, years and years ago. Okay. And um, now we're, we're just, we call it our whatever plan. And like, do you, we, we, but we also have the bread and butter plan where we have our tempos, our speed work, our midweek long runs and our mm -hmm. long runs on the weekends. But um, everything else we kind of fill in with, what do you feel like doing today? Oh, <laughs> and okay. it's worked out for a lot of us. Okay, cool. So now have you guys done the recent um, Battle for Brooklyn run, I think it was a 10K? No, I haven't. I haven't done any of those lately. You I haven't, haven't done the Battle of Brooklyn. I've been pretty. Uh, I had a really rough um, year in 2009. I worked really hard for a race, and it didn't go the way I wanted it to. So okay. this has been like a rebuilding year. The rebuilding year. So uh -huh. you, oh, I think Brooklyn had a recent marathon, their own marathon. They did. They did. I was actually. I wasn't able to be there. I was out in Philly for the Philly marathon, supporting a friend of mine. Cool. Yeah. Oh, so you were cheering. Uh, Cheering from afar. All right. <laughs> Even though it was in my backyard, I was really sad that I missed that. That was I very was really exciting. happy to be there for my You friend. know, that all these uh, marathons are coming up uh, all over the place. Even Van Cortlandt Park has their own, the holiday marathons. That's right. I, had up, I guess those are things in the future for you if you, you, you're back to recovering. Right, right. Well, I, I, I'm pretty recovered. I just um, wanted to. Um, I kind of cut back on the little races and kind of just worked a lot for this last marathon I did okay. this fall. I think you said your sister, your younger sister, works for a charity that helps Native Americans. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, she works um, for the Center for Native American Youth, uh, and that's through the Aspen Institute at, in Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. And um, it's, a new, it's a new center. It was uh, just started this, fa this past February by Senator Dorgan. And, um, or past Senator Dorgan, and um, they're kind of looking at youth programs. They're really interested in um, Native American youth, and mm -hmm. they're looking at education, they're looking at health, they're looking at um, uh, community involvement. So my, my sister is kind of all over the U.S. with working with different tribes and different organizations, and um, working within their different youth programs. Okay. There was an interesting person she was supporting, a Dirk Whitebreast. Yes, Tell us okay. about Dirk. Well, I learned about Dirk through Josie and Your my sister. sister. And she went out for one of his marathons to help support him. And he did 10 marathons in 30 days. This um, is 
but he had a very specific uh, cause. Also, he was trying to raise awareness about, about the high rate of suicide among Native Americans. Right, right. He um, had had a sister who had committed suicide, and uh, wanted to raise um, raise awareness about prevention in Indian Country, and um, also just I think he wanted to show an example of motivation and commitment and um, and just what you can do when you put your mind to something. Right, and then I guess he goes around making us presentations around the different uh, reservations. <laughs> I don't know too much about uh, about Native Americans other than what you see in the movies. Right. Are there any favorite movies that you think really portray Native Americans appropriately? Running is such a big part of the Navajo culture because, you know, it, it teaches you endurance. It teaches you struggle. It teaches you to be strong-hearted than just iron-willed. On your mark. It's amazing of all the problems that we have in this town and of all the obstacles that are set in front of these kids and these families, that they're able to compete against the richest and most well-off schools in athletics and beat them. All the way, son! You know, we have issues. We have extreme poverty. There's nobody here that's at my caliber of running. The second guy on my team is three minutes behind me, so. If I could train you how to run your paint, all of you guys would be elite runners. That's something that you have to do on your own. If you've ever run over a mile and you've ever pushed your body to the breaking point, that's what it teaches you. It teaches you to deal with struggle and pain. Nice. It makes you a strong person. When I go running now, I start thinking about like how far I've come. I want to get out there and experience you know, what my family hasn't. Every kid you see that comes from a reservation and succeeds has run through an awful lot of people and have told them they're not going to be nothing. I think that's very true for runners on the Navajo Nation. I think, I think that the story that Tales and that Henry Lou told is a very um, very true. <laughs> yeah, it was three, three high school seniors, I guess, mm -hmm. all, all competing against each other. I guess they were, two of them were the same school, I think, or one was a different school. It's been a while since I've seen it, but it was, right. but I think it, it, it motivates or inspires runners and non-runners. It, it was such, a, such an inspirational story. Right. Now, it's, it, the title is Run to the East. I was thinking on the way over. I can't recall, why was it called Run to the East? Do you recall why? Because you said you got up in the morning to run towards the sun. Was that, is that the same idea here? Right, that's the same idea. <laughs> the same idea, oh, okay. Uh -huh. I was wondering, you know, what, because the expression is go west. I said, okay, so what's this Run to the East? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the, the, the sun comes up in the east. Oh, okay. and you want to run to greet, uh, like his dad said, to greet the sun. Right. So, uh, so Henry got the idea, and uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was another charity that was, I think, mentioned in the movie. It had a great, great name, Wings of America. They pick runners throughout um, the reservations or through Native American runners who are doing really well, and they bring them into this program, and they... Um, kind of supplement their coaching and their training and then they also have them go back out into the community and lead um, clinics for for community members on um, health and nutrition. Have you done Boston for example? It has a heartbreak hill. It, it, it has three. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it done Boston. I, I, I did Boston in 2009, and it was quite the experience. Um, and I've done New York, and um, I've done Chicago. <laughs> so I've done the really big, the, the big, big ones. local ones. Well, let's yeah. go back to Boston. How was its Heartbreak Hill? The one I think at about mile 20 or so? I still think Navajo Pines Heartbreak Hill is worse than Boston. So that's probably a good training one for Boston. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you want to right. go that far. Do you plan to do the Brooklyn Marathon? It depends on what, how it 
falls into the next year and uh -huh. what uh, my plans are. I haven't really picked a race for next fall, but um, I'm thinking I might want to commit to a spring race. But the winter training here is pretty intense. It's pretty cold. It's pretty bitter. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I don't know if that's what I want to commit to just yet. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm sure Jerry and uh, Kara McCary can, uh, can offer some tips. Right. Excellent. But well, besides the, the women's group you run with, do you run with any other groups? For example, Brooklyn has uh, several teams, right? They do have several teams. I have a couple of really great friends that I run with, and it's, I think it's pretty rare. I think it takes a long time to find someone that you really click with who will commit to doing the 540 wake up calls. Yeah, and lots <laughs> I mean, of miles. That's, that's the 540 <laughs> getting to the to the to the field, right? Right. The wake up calls is entirely different to earlier right. time. Well, that's not, that's not unusual. Many runners start with a group like the Prospect Park Track Club or the Urban Athletics or Run Nike, right. and they'll make friends and they'll you know now form their own little club and right. uh, and, and motivate each other because running is a very social. Thing to do. You know, I should add, I found Urban Athletics by doing uh, team and training. So I w was first, I was just looking for a running group in New York, so just a partner even, someone to run with, and um, kind of had someone say, oh, well, did you ever think about doing a marathon? And I said, no, that, that's kind of, no. That's crazy. <laughs> and um, someone said, well, you should really think about it. I think you'd really enjoy it. And maybe, you know, you'll, you'll definitely find some runners. Is that was my first marathon. Do you remember the coach for team and training? Ramon and Steve Harris. Oh, okay, Harrison. that's very recent. Yeah, um, in 2007, I want to say. Okay. When coach I Ramon, I had him as a guest. Early history of Gotta Run. He's so he was, great. He was my first <laughs> running coach as yeah. well. So he was he your was, first running coach. He was my coach. first marathon coach. And, um, wow, so we have something in common. Can yeah. you believe that? <laughs> I missed um, my first marathon, missed Boston qualifying seven seconds. So that's wow. what made me want to come back for more. <laughs> I wish you all the success in the world and that you were an inspiration to not only to Native Americans, to every any runner and non runner in, in your endeavors. So thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much. Well, I've had a great time.